Right, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this type of video. Subscribers to the channel will know I've done a few documentary slash podcast style videos like this in the past on players such as Georgios Borohov, Roy Keane, Ricardo Bocchini, and a few others. So this is nothing new except for the fact that we're going to turn it into a bit of a series and a regular feature on the channel now. With that in mind, do feel free to let us know which players you'd like to see us look at in the future in the comments. I already asked that question on Twitter and we've had suggestions of Adriano, Lev Yashin, Paul Gascoigne, Roberto Baggio, Romario, Mokhtar Dahari and of course Neil Franklin, among many others. As you can see, it's a pretty eclectic bunch and I'm open to covering current players or borderline ancient ones from Ballon d'Or winners to the most utterly obscure and unknown, just as long as I think they'd make for an interesting video. Today is the turn of almost undoubtedly the greatest Greek footballer to have ever lived, Vasilis Hatsipanigas. I wrote about Hatsipanigas when I first set up my own website, halftimereport.com, and today is going to be all about him. For those of you who haven't watched one of our documentary style videos before, they're really more of a podcast experience, since we tend to struggle for images, so you're probably just best listening whilst you're at the office working, working out at the gym, or tinkering with your fancy football teams in another browser. Also, for any actual Greek speakers watching, I do apologise for all the names I'm about to absolutely slaughter, including Hatspanegas himself. Okay, here we go. In 2003, to celebrate UEFA's 50th anniversary, each European nation was asked to select a golden player of the past 50 years. England's was Bobby Moore, Germany's was Franz Beckenbauer, the Netherlands went for Johan Cruyff, and the Greeks, theirs was Vasilis Hatspanegas. The Hellenic Football Federation opted for Hatsbenigas, even though he never played a competitive fixture for Greece. Despite his brilliance, Hatsbenigas' career became a myriad of wives, as he was denied numerous moves to Europe's top clubs and the chance to represent his country. When a World Eleven was put together to face the New York Cosmos in 1984 in an exhibition game, there were some well-known faces on show. Beckenbauer, Kempes, Keegan, Shilton, Kroll, and Hugo Sanchez, all among the impressive lineup. Having played out his entire career in footballing obscurity, Hatsipanigas' genius was still recognised, as he took to the field alongside such as Steam Piers. Greece had a difficult start to the 20th century, and much of these troubles had a direct effect upon his family. The Greco-Turkish War set the tone, and Hatsipanigas' parents were forced to move, becoming refugees. Greece became a dictatorship in the 1930s and soon saw itself suffering from Nazi occupation throughout World War II. Stability in the country never seemed likely and after the war finished, civil war broke out. Once the civil war was over in 1949, thousands of political refugees left Greece with Tashkent and Almaty, now Almaty, proving the most common destinations. It was at this time that Hatsipanigas' parents moved to Tashkent, where he was born on October 26, 1955. Tashkent was undergoing a number of radical changes at the time. One of the key cities of the Silk Road, Tashkent shook off that image as refugees flooded the city and began an industrial revolution. Any such progress was halted in 1966, when Tashkent earthquake devastated the city, destroying 80% of it. Out of this chaos, though, a star was born. Dynamo Tashkent spotted the youngster training in a park and offered him a contract, but Hatsipanigas chose to join Paktar Tashkent instead due to their impressive youth setup. He was handed his debut at 17 against Shakhtar Donetsk and remained in the first team for the next three years until he left the club. With Paktakor, Hatsipanigas quickly made a name for himself. He held the club to promotion to the top flight in 1973 and was named as the league's second best player in 1974 and 1975, despite still being a teenager. It is worth noting that the man who beat Hatsipanigas to the award on both occasions was one Ole Blocking, who is also European Footballer of the Year and a Ballon d'Or winner in 1975, so no shame there. Hatsipanigas began representing the USSR at international level, first with the under-21s and then with the first team before being chosen for the Soviet Union's Olympic team of 1976, which won a bronze medal. Little did he know it, but those teenage years would prove the happiest and most productive of his footballing career. He was playing on the world stage and the USSR's domestic league was a relatively strong one at the time. In 1975, the possibility of a return to Greece opened up for Hatsipanigas and his parents. However, 
the move became very complicated. Soviet lawsmen players couldn't be classed as property as they were in other nations, and therefore could not simply be bought or sold. Hatsipanigas already knew this, as Olympiakos, the most successful club in Greece, had already tried and failed to acquire his services. His only option was to terminate his Soviet citizenship and apply for repatriation in Greece. Even that route was laden with complications though. Hatsipanigas' family ties meant he was unlikely to be granted repatriation throughout much of Greece, and he was advised his only real chance would be where his grandparents had relocated to, Thessaloniki. This of course meant finding a football team in the region. Still only 20, Hatsipanigas joined Heraklis FC on a two-year deal. He had put his trust in an Armenian based in Moscow who oversaw the deal, and would regret doing so for the rest of his career. The contract Hatsipanigas signed was open to a small piece of Greek legislature, which stated that Heraklis could renew his deal every year for the next 10 years, effectively tying him to the club for the rest of his career. In 1975, having inspired a markedly average Heraklis team to Greek Cup victory, Hatsipanigas took the club he was still playing for to court. He won, but Heraklis took the matter to a court of appeals and won. Hatsipanigas was trapped. The Greek league at the time was not a strong one, and Hatsipanigas was comfortably the star player. Interest in him continued to be high, with AEK, Lazio, Porto, Dynamo Moscow, and Stuttgart all having offers waved away by Heraklis. In 1977, Hatsipanigas suffered an injury and flew to London in order to receive treatment. The doctor he was assigned was the Arsenal physio, and as Hatsipanigas was nursed back to full fitness, he began training with the Arsenal squad, who nicknamed him Aristotle. Even alongside the likes of Jennings, Brady and McDonald, his class still shone through, and Terry Neal inquired to Heraklis with regards to signing the now 22-year-old midfielder, but Heraklis were having none of it. Heraklis were essentially a mid-table club who hadn't won a competition in 30 years before Hatsipanigas joined the club. They knew their so-called golden era was relying upon one man. Moreover, they become financially dependent on the skillful playmaker. Crowds would flock from across Greece to see the young man with the ball at his feet, and Heraklis couldn't afford to let him go at any cost. This was most clearly highlighted when Panathinaikos bid £1.85 million for him at a time when Diego Maradona had just become the most expensive player in the world, joining Barcelona for £3 million. When this last offer was batted away, and now approaching his late 20s, Hatsipanigas resigned himself to a career at Heraklis. The misfortunes of circumstance which played Hatsipanigas' career went further than that though. Having represented the Soviet Union at international level, FIFA ruled they could not also represent Greece. Despite all the troubles of his career, this was the one thing that hurt Hatsipanigas the most. Even though he desperately wanted to play football outside of Greece, Hatsipanigas had Greek blood running through his veins and regularly speaks of his sadness and never being able to play for his country. Still, when you hear him today, there is hurt in Hatsipanigas' voice that he could never prove his credentials on the world stage with either club or country. He would have every right to be bitter, yet he seems regretful rather than resentful, admitting it was a mistake to ever leave the Soviet Union in 1975. Hatsipanigas went on to play 281 times for Heraklis over 15 years, hanging up his boots in 1990 after a UEFA Cup tie against Valencia. To those who saw him, Hatsipanegas will always be one of the true greats, yet sadly, those people will always be limited due to a cruel and unfair contract. His father later revealed that when he and his mother moved to Tashkent, they almost moved to London. It's incredible to think what might have been had he chosen the latter. Hatsipanegas' legacy in Greece is still great, where he became known as the footballing Yuri, although it should of course have been much wider. As well as his magic on a football pitch, his numerous court battles resulted in the altering of Greek laws, which was sadly introduced too late to affect Hatsipanigas himself. So that's it for today's video and the story of Vasilis Hatsipanigas. If you enjoyed that, you'll most likely enjoy our other documentary style videos that I'm planning on putting together all in one big playlist, and maybe even my book, which is out in August and is available to pre-order now. Thanks for watching, as always, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, let us know which players you'd like to see covered in depth in the future, and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s.